my channel here over at Subscribestar. So after Alan Wake 2 failed to turn a profit, Games Senior Community Manager calls for bigots. That means you <laughs> to be removed from gaming communities. So this is uh, this is just a, a a drive into crazy land where where people think money I guess comes from trees. They want to remove bigots from gaming. So that that would be everyone in gaming sit in a Call of Duty lobby. So these people are so far removed from understanding sales that you can read their suggestions on how to alienate the customer and you go through their ideas and your jaw will drop you go all the things you're coming up with a uh, pruning the tree of of istophobes it's like you're talking about paying customers you want to pare down the, the par paying customer base the thing is in their defense it is okay to tell people that some games are not for them and it's for this other group that's behind the curtain, as long as there is another group behind the curtain who's ready to buy. And in, in games and movies and comics and probably other pop culture stuff, that other group, the, the woke, far left-wing, blue-haired, obese SJW um, with the piercings in the nose, they're not stepping up to buy all these woke products. And I only say such a offensive, hyperbolic statement because there's a long history of the past five years at least of movies, comics, and games that have been steadily losing money. So where's that far left-wing audience? They're just, they're doing something else. Or, or they're, they come up with some other excuse why they were they were busy and they couldn't support the product. Or, or when the game went off the air, uh, they, they're they circulating a petition to tell Sony, I think, oh, bring the game back, we'll play it, because now we know it's a left versus right-wing issue. Organically, we weren't playing the game. But as soon as it became the right-wing was laughing at the left, they beg them to, to come back and bring it back so they can pay Sony for a game that they don't want to play in the first game, place because otherwise they would. They go, oh no, it, it wasn't advertised correctly. It's like, really? A, a game that was being talked about for eight years wasn't advertised correctly? So um, in these, uh, in these games, movies, and comics, this other group just doesn't seem to exist, even though they're very vocal on Twitter or YouTube. They're not actually paying customers and yes eventually this is all going to end but not because they have a come to jesus moment because i think that would have happened already but because the companies will simply go bankrupt and the industry will collapse like back in our atari days back in i don't know early 80s late 70s and uh, the games will just shift to china or korea maybe i mean japan can turn their stuff around but for american companies no they're they're going to go down with the ship on this so let me um Read this, uh, Opmed's, uh, oh, this chick calls for bigots removed from gaming communities. But then this other guy, uh, Nico Partners, director of research, Ahmed, reacted to the game being shut down. The comments around Concord from right-wing gamers shows, and he, you know, he just wants to say white people, and you know that, shows the power of collective self-deception. If you say delusional stuff about uh, die enough times and build a conspiracy-focused narrative, they start seeing that false narrative everywhere. I guess we have to live with this now. And, of course, the underlying emotional response is just standard bigotry and nothing new. Except now there are grifters putting on a four-act stage play about how capital owners have gone... <laughs> DOS Capital, gone woke, and therefore no longer care about the profit motive for some reason. So I guess you're probably talking about, um, like, nerdrotic and geeks and gamer types of people. So he talks about the collective power of right-wing deception from people who don't know what bathroom to use. There's a, uh, a left-wing meltdown over the $100 million failure of Concord, and this is bothering them for some reason. Because there have been a lot of left-wing failures lately of video games and movies. And, 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 you know, now video games can cost as much as a movie. So a video game or a movie, both tanking for $200 million, are pretty serious. They say, and the comic books are uh, obviously we're not doing uh, well either. But I think they're just, like, we're pruning the audience down. Yeah, you're just, yes, yes, you are. Is a new audience going to grow? No, but we got rid of all the istophobes and the haters, and Heather Antos is in charge now. It's like, how well is that working out for you? It's like, well, it, it's just, it's not. It's just getting smaller and smaller. Like, okay. Like, you realize with comics, there has to be a, a like, it's a generational thing. It's like, like they, I mean, yes, they killed comics, but they killed comics probably 20 years ago. So um, they say that the right wing is tiny with loud voices, as as that was also in that video I showed up uh, um, the Black Girl Gamer interview and Kim Ballar. Um, that's an interesting 26 minutes to listen to because they're, they're a collection of crazy people, like just le legitimately 
the, the worst college whack job weirdos who don't know what it's like to sell something directly. So they don't understand that experience of dealing with customers. So they go, it's a tiny, uh, it's a tiny group of right wingers uh, with live voices. So, well, why would these sweet baby black girl grammar woke types, why would they care at all if the group is so small? If the, if the game brigade types are so inconsequential, why would you even do live streams crying about it or, or how could they possibly affect your bottom line? Like these games have lost money. Well, if it's this, if it's this far right wing group that are so small, something's not adding up. There's a lot of things that they're saying don't add up. So the thing is, the gamers don't want these people in games because they're insane. They're just globalist puppets. And uh, and there's some talk in here about games journalism. Where the, and one of these girls is going, oh yeah, if you want like legitimate news, you have to go to mainstream news sources, legacy news sources. And she's saying this all this straight face, because like, oh, we're, we're on completely different pages. And she, she mentions, uh, you have to go to Verge, Polygon, IGA, and Kotaku for, for your legitimate, trusted sources of news. And you know m most people are looking at that like, you're insane. That's just toxic, left-wing, Marxist, monkey, monkey pox. So the messaging in these woke stories is brutally being rejected for games and movies, which bothers them because they feel that they know better than us what ideas we should be able to, uh, to entertain. And this guy, uh, Ahmed, is babbling on in heavy copium about self-deception and we're delusional for rejecting the woke Larry Fink globalist checklist. And we're building a false conspiracy narrative about these stupid woke games. But I can end his argument with this. Why didn't the obese cat ladies, the soy boys, all the woke POCs, the BLT community, why didn't they buy the games? Why, didn't, why don't they go see the movies? Why do these things repeatedly fail? And then this woke idiot who lacks self-awareness calls the based Nazi chads who reject the woke cancer bigots. And then babbles about how these companies don't actually make woke games because they're filthy capitalists and their only motive is profit. So first of all, your own pussies on the left don't support your woke garbage, so get fucked. The customer is rejecting globalist themes. The, the pendulum is, is really on the swing backwards now. So let me set, set you straight. straight. We're very pro our tribe, and we're anti anyone who's against us, which would be you, all these, these, these woke, anti-white, anti-nation, anti-Christian, misandrist, uh, crazy people. And as for bigots, that's your own anti-whiteism coming out. You're merely projecting. And the other point is interesting, uh, because I raise it often, the, the straw man about companies' motive being only financial, well, that falls apart when you look at the decisions they're making to produce woke games and how they lose money. His argument doesn't make any sense. He's saying that the games can't be woke because woke doesn't sell and capitalist companies are only money motivated. That contradicts itself because literally the, go the woke games are not selling leading you to the conclusion that their motive is not financial, it's a religious belief of globalism, which it is, or you're forced to believe that the people running billion-dollar companies are stupid. They're not stupid. They're evil, and there's a big difference there. So I keep looking into these anti-white people into games, and I, I notice that they're POCs, as I showed with the last video, and they seem to be really racist against European people and, and men in general. But the games and movies that they're involved with are not selling, so presumably your audience is not people of European descent or, or men of any sort, or, or straight men, I should say, or straight people. So why aren't your woke games selling? Why don't the, the, the non-white audience, the, the BLT, gay, whatever community, the, the pox community, why aren't they buying your games? There's enough of them out there to sustain your industry, but for some magical reason, they're just they're keeping their money in their pockets or or why don't the companies fire you and hire pro european people or at least people who are not biased against their primary audience um and not these just insane globalists who are just kind of pushing college stoned 101 nonsense marxism that they've been pushing for the past 50 years that deep down like when you sober up you know it you know it's garbage because the professor teaching it to you is has got a hundred thousand dollar car and lives in a, a wealthy enclave and he's not sharing his money with the people it's like they never do it 
as soon as you start asking, oh, you should share your car with us. You should share your house. You should you should donate some money. It's like, no, no, we want other people to do that. Oh, okay, well, the philosophy is garbage then. So none of this is making sense. And they're, they're making movies and videos and, and games and stuff for gays, non-whites, and, and women's. And the audience is just not supporting them. Then the weird thing is they get online and they blame the right wing. They call us far they're talking about gamers people who play video games and they're calling them far right as if they're as if they're you know in hugo boss and part of a militia and and uh, marching around and, and roman saluting and like when they're not playing video games they're they're busy in um like blood tribe and patriot front and marching around you know calling people apathists or something and i am like you're talking about video game players they're that you think they're that you think the video game players are the far right Gamers rise up. Um, oh, and then they also refer to themselves, especially in that last video, as POC and marginalized. And I, I, I you know, I should go back through that and I should count the times that they say marginalized. And they say all these buzzwords repeatedly, partially because the things they're saying aren't real. They don't have a foundation, so they have to keep hitting you over the head with this marginalized, marginalized, marginalized. I would love, and, and then they, they, they've got three black communist women having a conversation but we're going to have difficult conversations about gaming you go oh so why don't you have someone with a, a, a diverse point of view no no we're not going to do that i mean then what's the point of the conversation all all her videos got like no views but then she does she does this video and it got like a hundred times as many as many views i mean you want to talk about you talk, want to talk about an issue you really have to people have people from all sides of the issue and instead you have three female black communists who have no interest in games they just they're just interested in um calling themselves marginalized and speaking truth to power and they want us to be good allies to them so there's this disconnect the um the marxist uh framework is so far away from our framework that there's no meeting in the middle we don't need them and they should be boycotted a sweet baby the black girl gamers whoever's involved with these games these these woke people should not be involved with, with games and ultimately the power you have is in your pocketbook you simply don't have to support these people and they'll go away because they'll run out of people's money so they're doing a progressive work which to us is obviously aids we think they should be allies to us and that we're marginalized oppressed disenfranchised and uh, and othered by their framing when they're calling themselves uh, pox and marginalized and all this kind of whatever what they're doing is creating a division between them and most gamers so the gamer would see that they have interests adverse to gamers which is weird because they're trying to sell games to the customer they want the games companies to tell the customers that not all games are for all people because these people are insane they're not in the business of selling directly to the customer so they don't understand how crazy it sounds when essentially they they're going to say something that's going to be perceived to they want the companies these people are kind of go-betweens they want their political commissars with there they want the companies to tell something to the customer that would be perceived as an insult which doesn't make sense they want the, com the companies to say like oh this is not for you um it's not for the bigoted audience but if the bigoted audience is the straw man is such a small percentage, you wouldn't even need to address address the issue at all. So why are you addressing it? Like why don't you just make your games and sell your games? You say it's a, a small but vocal minority of, of far right wing people, and then you look at Gary Nerdrotic and 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 whoever else is on YouTube. And you go, those are the, the that's the far right wing because um. Uh, <laughs> I think there, I, I promise you there's a further right wing out there and, and they don't play video games at all. This is just the middle of the political bell curve. But when you're so far left, you look at people like Gary and Nerd Roddick and they envision him as, as uh, I don't know, camp commandant or something. So, But the thing is, because they're not selling directly to a, the customer, they don't understand that. Well, you quickly learn when you're selling directly to a customer, you quickly learn what sells because there's money involved. And it's, you know, it's important to you. But they're hired as these political commissars, where sometimes left-wingers do try to sell their own games, and they usually fail abysmally because there's just not... They say there's there's a loud vocal minority of people who say there's an audience for these, these games and these comics and these movies. Rarely do they turn up. They turn up for things like uh, Barbie with Margot Robbie and um, 
Ryan Gosling. They turn up for that. It does $2 billion. And, and they go, look, look, a girl power feminist woke movie did did well. And I look at that and I go, I I mean, if you turn the sound off, it, it looks like like German propaganda with two people out of Aryan central casting. To me, it's like, you, oh, so you got the two of the, of the most beautiful, the whitest of white people you could possibly find. Yeah, that's a win for, for what exactly? It's like these people are nuts. Oh, but they are, like they're constantly referring to themselves as POCs. But when they do that, they're saying that the games are are you only useful to them as propaganda, which they are. It's it's just a vector to carry. If they could make games and they couldn't put their 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 left wing nonsense in it, they wouldn't be in games. They'd be in something else. They're doing this this public job of either games journalists or being in the political commissars, the the, the what do they call it? the game narrative companies? That's what Sweet Baby does. They take a game and they f it in the a and 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 make it woke, and that's and they get paid for that. It's like, well, you know, the gamers are looking at this and go, you probably shouldn't be involved in games. And the way to the way to stop them obviously is uh, is boycott. But they're triggered by public criticism which they say doesn't matter at all but then they're going through they're jumping through hoops to um to try to get uh near erotic ryan cannell um geeks and gamers demonetized and preferably banned off of youtube because their voices are just not important at all but they still need to be shut down it's like well come on and youtube told them they were not interested in shutting down those very milk toast channels and i don't mean that as an insult they're wildly successful i mean their political takes are milk toast they're right in the middle of the political bell curve they're not i mean i look at the gary guy and you like they're looking at him and they're calling him far right wing and the, the other people i look at them I'm like you just you people are nuts if you think this is the right wing you're the right wing is not on youtube at all they're on odyssey and and bit shoot and a little bit on rumble they, they have these sneaky channels anyway so they're doing a public job and they're criticized by they're criticized you know legitimately that's part of being in the public you should hear the things people used to say to me and, you know, honestly, I think the people who really went off on me um, kind of just left the channel, so I don't really get that much YouTube criticism anymore. There is a, there's one guy on bitch shoot. He's not a fan, but he listens to the videos, and he lets me know he's not a fan. Anyway, so that's the customer saying they don't like the product, which is fine. That's the customer's right to do. I mean, it's if, if you're going to be in the public, you're going to have to have a little thicker skin or, or you know. Anyway, um, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on next episode.